Well, hello. I hope that this video is finding you in good health and in good spirits. I'm having a pretty good day. Although, my topic I find a little distressing. I'm talking about the campus protests, mostly in the United States, although we do have a couple of them here in Canada, uh, concerning the Israeli Gaza Palestinian conflict. I don't get it. I seriously don't get it because it doesn't make any sense. People are taking over university buildings and erecting camps in the middle of the campus because they want the gov the university administration to call for a ceasefire and divest any financial ties they have with Israel. Does that even make sense to anybody? Because I'm quite sure that when the Israeli government is sitting around the cabinet table making decisions about how they're prosecuting this war, not one of them picks up the phone to call the president of Columbia and ask them for their okay, or the Harvard, or McGill, or any of the other places. You know, and as far as calling for a ceasefire, we don't need a ceasefire. We need a gosh darn peace process. We need a permanent peace solution to this. This problem has been building since 1947. And it's time people get off of their doffs and start building a solution. And that is going to be a two-state solution more than likely because the one state solution, I think that ship has sailed, is going to require a bucket load of money for the reconstruction of Gaza. And it is going to require like regional power alliances, security forces that are acceptable to both the Palestinians, i.e. forces from Arab nations, and also something that is equally acceptable to the Israelis, right? This is going to be a massive peacekeeping, for the lack of a better word, uh, operation. And it is not going to happen in six months. We have years of building ahead of us. And so, yeah, you're tent out in the middle of the quad on the university campus. Ain't ever going to cut it. But anyways... So the question that I have for the cards today, and this is this has actually been a huge topic of conversation in my household. My husband and I, over the dinner table, have been going, and he accused me the other day of being outrageously cynical. Like he says, this is the most cynical I've ever seen you, which is something to say, because I am cynical. <laughs> There's just no two ways about it. You know? And my question is, is this outside agitators? Specifically, is this part of a Russian disinformation campaign trying to destabilize um, Joe Biden? Because this is not directed at anyone. There's there's no calls to a letter writ writing campaign to your members of Congress and your Senate. And boy, you overtaking Colombia. Is the United Nations headquarters still in New York City? Because I think it is. That's where you might want to be protesting. But I digress. At one point, and this is kind of the questions before the cards, is this a disinformation campaign uh, pushed by the far right and or Russia. So that is my question before the cards. This is Kate at her absolutely most cynical. And I'd like the cards to tell me whether um talking nonsense or if there's something to this. So let's pull some cards. And the deck that we're using today is a new one for this channel. It is the Sunflower Field Tarot. 
Um, don't have an artist names, but it is put out by uh, Pentagram Publishing from the Ukraine. I chose it because, uh, well, it's all sunflowers and sunflowers are a symbol of peace and goodness knows we need some of that around here. So let's get in to the cards and see if my, my natural cynicism is justified or realistic or rational. Because, yeah, sometimes I can overdo it. Signifier in the reading, Ace of Pentacles. This is a card that's about beginnings, and it's about prosperity and manifesting abundance. It's about seeing things or, you know, having visions and dreams of people being, well, like good times and willingness to put in the work to make it happen. And it's a new beginning. It's a new start in the material real world very good opening card and it is crossed by a not so great card in this one it is the king of cups in a reverse position the king of cups is manipulative and it is like this self-centric this self-aggrandizing kind of energy and it is an overreaction so right now we have a cross we have these two cards pulling in two different directions in the signifier portion of the reading um, which would indicate that we this is not a monolith that we're dealing with in the past we have the four of swords well, this is the card that you know normally think about you know taking a break having a nap rest rejuvenation you know retreating into a state of contemplation and you know sincere introspection don't think it's going to directly apply in this reading, but certainly everybody has retreated from the fact that there is a problem. And there has been since 1947. It is now 2024. It is time for the world to get off its ass and start finding some realistic solutions, right? The Palestinian people have to have their own state that is the only thing that is going to fix this the whole idea of a one state solution that i think that ship has sailed a long time ago and so now we're going to have to look at developing some kind of two state solution and that is going to require a lot more than campus protests first of all it's going to require a bucket load of money because gaza is going to have to be reconstructed and then finally there has to be a reasonable two-state solution because you know and, and either that or a path to it and i believe the saudis have come out and said they won't discuss any of the other things on the list that need to be done like security forces or everything until there is a commitment made to a two-state solution or a path to that, right? So yeah, people are getting uh, serious about it, which is about time, because in the past, we have done very little. We've retreated and we've kicked the can down the road and everybody started to ignore it and it yeah, didn't work out so well. In the near future, we have the 10 of Pentacles. This is in a reverse position and we're looking at you know, this is about financial losses. And yes, you look at the, the level of destruction inside Gaza, like the place has been totaled. There is no infrastructure left, right? And family discord. So here we're having these political differences that are being spun up. And again, here's cynical me. Um, I think there's a lot of people that are using this situation in order to advance their own personal agenda as opposed to anything to do with the Palestinians in Gaza. I have some pretty strong thoughts on that. I might even show them. And the sky the reading, this is the overarching energy. This is kind of the goal. And we have bad news. We got seven of swords in a reverse position. This is a card that is about cunning and trickery and secrets being held and um, yeah 
there's there's again that whole idea that there's there is more than one person it's not a monolith and there is some shenanigans going on within this organization now we have in the foundation which is the underlying energy of the reading we have the ten of wands and it's in a reversed position ten of wands this is about burnout this is about breakdown this is about carrying so much of a load that you just you just crushed underneath it it's uh terrible and here we have people expending a whole bunch of energy and i in a lot of cases i think it is probably well-meaning energy but it's not productive energy it's not going to manifest anything at all because it's not being pointed in the right direction and message from spirit and here's yeah seven of wands in a reverse position this is because it's about having a resolution but having to give up a bit just because you're overwhelmed and you're exhausted by it so again we're coming back you know to that foundational energy about the burnout and the breakdown that we have with the ten of wands in a reverse position and here we have this this overwhelm just being overwhelmed by the situation and guess what it's an overwhelming situation we have famine in the north of gaza and it is spreading south and the situation is terrible and it is humanitarian crisis from the get-go and these are real lives that are being impacted on it like it is a five alarm fire and people are overwhelmed by it in the environment what's going on around it eight of swords lots of negativity and again a lot of helplessness it's feeling restricted that you have got nothing you do you are horrified by the situation and that's understandable and you feel helpless and that's understandable and you know you can't help but feel sorry for the victims of this people who quite frankly had nothing to do with it and don't give me the oh hamas blah 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 because you can't tell me some five year old child or three month old baby is a hamas terrorist because they're not right the palestinian people are suffering greatly as are the israelis still i'm sure in mourning for the events of the 7th of october now in the hopes and fears department we have the four of pentacles now the four of pentacles can it's often called the miser's card right and it's this whole idea that you're holding on to things you're trying to save money and you're trying to control the situation and you're caught up in this whole idea of scarcity of materials it's that zero-sum game kind of idea if party x gets something there's less for me right so i gotta hold on to everything that i've got if there's any reproachment made towards another party it's taking away from me if they win i lose and i've got to fight it with everything i've got that is that four of pentacles fear that is playing strongly i think in this set of circumstances final outcome well this is a surprise ace of wands beginning a new action creation energy new projects new new ideas new actions coming forth really interesting that this celtic cross opened with an ace and is closing with an ace and it was you know prosperity in the physical world and the reality and the wands of course are the suit of action right and in the shadow card we have the fool the fool again another card that talks about new beginnings and potential it also is talking about optimism and spontaneity which i think a lot of this protest is but it's also a card that, that means naivete 
So, I think I'm going to have to rethink my most cynical take because I'm not picking up really anything in this. Although, yes, there are people that are driving this for their own benefit. Um, we have seen that, like a lot of the people that have been arrested are not members of campus, etc. But I think that the most of the people who are involved in this are sincere, well-meaning, their hearts are in the right place, they're not very effective. They're not doing things that are effective or that are going to help the situation. But again, I go back to those cards that are all about the sense of overwhelm, the sense of being exhausted from it, the sense of being restricted and feeling helpless about the situation. And that is all kind of realistic energy. But I think they really want, you know, it is the, the those two aces the hope and the um, wanting new beginnings, wanting to get this on the road, take it another turn. Um, and I, I can appreciate that. I, safe here, dumb, fat, and happy in Canada, you know, I'm horrified about what the Israeli government is doing. I think they have to be held accountable, and I pray that they will be. And Netanyahu has got some questions to be answered, and I hope it is in the docket of the ICC at some time in the not too distant future. But in the meantime, I take a little bit of comfort from contacting my political representative, so it's my member of parliament, and also I make con charitable contributions to two organizations that are doing as much as they can. They're getting ready for when they can go in and help people in a real manner. On that would be World Central Kitchen, who are still trying to feed people in Gaza. And as soon as we get the, the pier built so that aid can be delivered, we're also gonna need, again, a security force to make sure that the aid goes to the people who need it. And also, uh, Medicine Sans Pantier, um, Doctors Without Borders. And as, you know, that's where this family's charitable donations are going, is to help the real physical now needs of the Palestinian people in Gaza. Uh, because quite frankly, that it has allowed to get to this point where we have people starving and all famines in this day and age are political acts. They're not acts of nature. Um, and that's why, you know, I am not making excuses for the Israeli government because they have behaved terribly and in complete violation of Western democratic values. And they need to be held accountable for it. But at the same time, we have to recognize that the people of Palestine are suffering greatly and we have to do what we can to alleviate it in whatever way it is. So let's take all that energy that is floating around, that well-meaning energy, and let's start directing it in directions that it is going to bear fruit. And please remember, foreign policy decisions do not take place in the public eye, right? It's not done on the six o'clock news. This is done in diplomatic channels, in diplomatic circles. So it is going to be a while before you see it. Your influence can be to your member of Congress, to your senator. You know, you want to hold up a sign and protest? The United Nations is right there in New York City. By all means, have at it, Columbia. That is the reading for today, and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye for now.